Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a Seven Year Disaster Battle playing as Clan Scryer going up against Greenskins. So, the army that we have in our position here is almost a perfect Doom stack. It's almost there. There's a few tweaks that I would make to it to make it absolutely perfect. Uh, but what we're up against here is quite a lot. So, I reckon our army here would easily beat one of theirs, but they have two full armies and a small garrison force coming out, so a little bit more than two full stacks which is, under most circumstances, just a lot to deal with. We're also going to be fighting in the underway, which is good for Skaven with this kind of army. It just depends on the terrain, making sure we can layer our, our um, weapons team properly. So I'm just seeing which type it is. Eh, this one... No, it's, it's not the best one, but it'll be okay. So, in terms of his army, what to do to make it perfect. Now, I don't think you need two Poison Wind Mortars, but it's okay to get them. Now... The um, assassin, the only reason that you would get an assassin is to increase your replenishment rate. But the thing is, with a, a uh, weapons team army, you don't actually need to increase your, your replenishment rate. Because after every battle, because you have so few actual units in your army, it should be like four to 500. Uh, whenever you take on captives, it's almost enough to replenish your entire army after every single victory. So you don't really need a good replenishment rate. You just need to not take casualties. So... What you'd be better off doing is taking this dude out and putting in another Plague Priest. The General is also a bad choice. There's nothing wrong with Warlords apart from the fact that there's just a better choice, which is a Plague Priest. Because you, ideally, you want to have at least four Plague Priests, especially in this sort of situation here, where you're going to be outnumbered and overwhelmed. They're your crowd control, and you need to have the ability to keep the enemy back, and they do such a good job of it for as long as possible for the uh, the actual weapons team to do their job. Loads of rattling guns, very much like that. I think you only really need four, though. So I would have taken one or two of these out for another Plague Priest, because you really do need that crowd control, especially here. Now, because we don't have those extra Plague, plague Priests, we're going to need to get um, extra minutes below. And I can see that your food is really low. Um... It's not really going to affect us too badly. Like, leadership on a, sp on a weapons team doesn't matter that much because once they're in melee with us anyway, we're doomed. So that's not going to matter whether we were here or here because um, they got no melee capabilities. It's all just about we just got to keep them at bay. Also, this does not affect summoned units, so it's okay to be in the red. And then we'll just see how well we can do. So this guy said he's tried this battle about three or four times and can't win it, which I can see why. I mean, it's not a perfect army. Just because you got loads of rattling guns doesn't mean it's gonna gonna win straight up. Um, you gotta have that crowd control. So yeah, perfect army for me is plague uh, grazier, four plague priests. I know it seems like a lot, but that's your that's just your entire crowd control. That's it. Uh, two warlock engineers, mostly just for boosting the. Um, the weapons team, uh, one Poison Wind Mortar, four Jezails, four Rattling Guns, four Plague Claw Catapults, that's it. I've tried a bunch of different Skaven armies, and that, I don't think I could fine-tune it any more than that. Um, now, you don't need to have it exactly like that, but I think that's the best army that I've been able to produce. It's been able to beat more or less anything. All right. And the reason why I've said that this one isn't the best terrain is because there's... You might not look, look like it from up here, but... The terrain is really bumpy, and because these guys are really small, if you put them behind this hill here, they might not shoot. So you've got to get down really low and have a look to see exactly where to put everyone. So he probably put people back here and just was, like, waiting there, not realizing that uh, the hills are going to get in the way. Doesn't matter so much for the Plague Claw Catapults. You can put that back there. That's not a problem. Um, he'd actually be better off not on the Plague Furnace in this one, just because it's the friendly fire could be a big problem. Um, these ones here also don't matter about terrain, but I gotta micromanage them, like, really well, because if they start shooting our own weapons teams, that can be really deadly. Alright, now we just gotta pick our ground here with care. See, there's the hills there. See, I don't like that spot there. That position's not good. It's also really dark, which really doesn't help. Okay, the ones up here are okay, but these ones, that's not good. 
Okay, just move the Rattling Guns out of the way there. Just gotta check. So there's a bit of a terrain issue here. So that, that can't be good. Like, this guy here is just gonna shoot straight into dirt. We can't have that. They'll be okay, but these ones aren't okay. Rattling guns go up front. Make sure the terrain's not too bad for them. That's why I said that this particular map is not the best. I've fought on this map plenty of times, and it's got some really tricky spots where it can obstruct your vision. There are some underway maps, especially like the Dwarfen ones that look like it's in the Dwarfen underway. They're really, really good because uh, they're just, just flat. See, that's not, it doesn't look, it doesn't look great, but the most important thing is that these guys can fire unobstructed. Unless they come down off the hill there. Yeah, it's not the best. Uh, if we moved back a little bit at the start, let me just see. It's also really dark, so it's hard to see. Like right, this, this spot here is okay. All right, I think we might go with that instead. It's super important that the terrain is is favorable. It's the most important thing here. So I'll move them back to here. Just because the terrain in front of us here just isn't it isn't working for me. So basically I'll have to reform. It'll it'll take them a moment to get here, so we we got time. We'll have time to regenerate magic. Alright, let's get going. So them get all the way back. There yeah, should be appropriate. Try to use the terrain here to our advantage. Put them in there. Okay, now... I'm not going to use that arcane conduit now. Because I reckon we'll hit the 30 winds of magic before they even arrive. So let's have a look at this balance of power as it comes in. So they're still bringing in their forces. We're really going to wish we had more plague priests. For sure. Yeah, they still haven't fixed the uh, Menace Below bug. If you'll notice, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you notice I ordered 9. Yeah, that's not a good spot there. Move them up. So yeah, check all of their firing lines, making sure... Yeah, you, you should move up a little bit. Same thing with you, move up a bit. Yeah, it's alright. You two move up to there. Actually, maybe I'll put you up to there. Not exactly checkerboarding, we just got to try to avoid shooting into the ground. Because, like, the assassins, they're okay crowd control, but nowhere near as good as a plague priest. Because of the, uh, the summons. Alright, you move back here. I can't stress enough how important it was, the positioning here. It needed to be as perfect as it could be. Um, unfortunately, it's just really bumpy terrain. Now, if it was like just a one-on-one -on -one fight, one army versus one army, I wouldn't have bothered. It would have been fine just to set up one straight line. But because we've got to deal with two armies, uh, we really need to maximize the damage. So any shots that are hitting dirt, unacceptable. Don't want to cast anything off just yet. Could be good if they can come at us in waves. We'll see. See, I didn't need to do any arcane conduits. Definitely don't want it in cooldown while I'm in the initial casting. Just be patient. I don't think it's going to be possible for us to get them to come at us early. They can see us now, so I guess we'll just see.
Popping down a plague might not be a bad idea either. Ton of them coming in over here, and plague does do a lot of damage. Just thin out, like a lot of their black orcs would be good, but they're just too far away. Right, I don't want these firing at will against chariots. That's not a good idea. You need to move faster. But yeah, let's try to draw them in a bit sooner. That'd be good. So here are the jezels. That's when they'll start shooting. That's it. Lure some of these chariots in. The fast units in first. He said that in the email that the uh, the cavalry was the biggest problem. I'm assuming this is part of the, the cavalry problem. Let's deal with them as early as we can. No point in wasting Plague Claw catapult ammo on it. Since every little thing counts here, we need to just try to get the bounce of power advantage. The best ones to shoot this are the Jezails and Rattling Guns. Try to get them in range of the jet of the rattling guns. Uh, nope, don't you shoot either. Not right now. Okay, there'll probably be a bit of friendly fire here, but these are some relatively high value units that we're taking out. Just because they're good against um, weapons teams, if they can get into melee with this. No point casting. I know we got 30 wins of magic, but there's no point casting on them right now. Is it going to do anything? Alright. Good. Taking out some of this stuff nice and early. Yeah, the terrain's a bit of a pain. I c ugh, bloody small goblin units here. If you're gonna shoot anything, actually shoot, shoot that. Yeah. Our guy here's taken a fair bit of damage, but soon I'm gonna pull him back so that he doesn't take any more. We'll start shooting soon. With the um, with these, I mean. So, you got a few kills there. Alright, here we go. Come on, kill that general. That'd be great if we can kill him. Because he's shattered. Alright, now we gotta start doing some crowd control. Good, we got him. Okay, let's pop this down here just to slow them down. Of course, that guy's not going to last long, but that doesn't matter. Okay, we got cavalry in coming over here. I might put you on that side over there to shoot at these cav. Now, I notice that your general is level 40, so if he does get killed, it's probably not the end of the world. So, Plague Priest is having a bit of a hard time. This is why we need more of them. Okay, hold him back over here. Our dude is not faring well there. But he'll heal a bit. 
kind of good it's on large unit scale, not ultra, because he'll kind of get more out of that heal potion. Alright, we can put them on fire at will now. Should be okay. Bouncer power is okay, but that doesn't mean we've just won straight away. Because as soon as they get to it, they cannot get to our front line. Oh god, the friendly fire. This is why it would be better if he's not on the fucking plague furnace. I have to keep him back now. That's it, just... Keep them busy, annoy them as much as possible. Don't let them get to the rattling guns. Ugh, they're here. I didn't use this. Bouncer Pale's in our favor, but we can still lose this if too many of them get to our weapons teams. How's our general doing over here? He's not doing too bad, actually. How's this guy going? Yes, they're fucking here. And they're just being an absolute nuisance. Now I'm out of uh, Vermintides. How's he going? So yeah, they're doing a fair bit of damage over here. Yeah, if you could turn around. Ugh, yeah, the cavalry's definitely being a problem. How are they all going? They're almost out of ammo, though. Bouncer power is good. We just need that army loss penalty. Just whenever you're ready, please. Okay, where's the general? Yep, yeah, let's pull him back now. There we go, there was the army loss penalty. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, in that battle there, we desperately needed more Plague Priests. We got through it, but holy crap. We ran on, like, we were really close to getting overwhelmed by them. Like, even one more Plague Priest could have done so much more crowd control. This guy here did a lot, even though he didn't get many kills. Uh, we used up all of the Pestilent Births and all of the Vermintides. And he, he did well as well. And he, he tanked them for quite a while as well, so... Damage isn't too bad. Now we'll see after the battle here, you'll see why you won't actually need the replenishment. Because we would have taken a ton of captives. That's all going to go up to full health. Don't get me wrong, love your army. I'd probably rate it 9 out of 10. But if you want that 10 out of 10, you need more Plague Priests. So we do this, full health. We essentially took no casualties. That's why you don't need an assassin. And now we'll just make sure everything else is okay. Looks like the campaign's pretty healthy. Loads of, it's, it's, it's a very late campaign. Empire looks like it's been destroyed. Um, you could probably win this if you pop down some more menace belows, but oh, am I gonna do this for you though? It's not clanishing. Big. Well, how how badly do you need Selzenmund? That's that's the big thing. It's like it's not my campaign. I don't know what we, how badly you need this. I gotta assume you need it, and I'll do it for you. Whatever. You gotta sort out your food though. If we win here, we're definitely not gonna. That's not gonna get your food back. Oh, you've actually got walls here. What? That's not a walled settlement garrison. Oh. 
Ugh, what's going on here? Oh, it's a, it's a major settlement. That's why. Settlement. Duh. Okay. I, I probably didn't actually need to order um, as many as I did then. Alright. Alright, keep the Night Runners in reserve. We'll just put some Skaven Slaves up on the wall here. See, I'm not used to having uh, major settlements that are not at tier 5 because whenever I capture a settlement as Skaven, I always push it straight to tier 5 and immediately build the walls and then make sure the walls are built sort of before I leave it. Because once you've got a tier 3 wall, you know, the, the lowest tier of the wall there, and you've at least got a warp bomb and it's very difficult for a low tier army like this to, to take it. Yeah, I maybe, maybe order too many of them, but... Okay, just, um, we're not going to be able to destroy any of these towers. Just try to shoot behind them. And we want to make sure we don't fight them up on the walls. Because once, once the siege towers are here, it's like, fighting up on the walls is not advantageous to us. Might want to save these menace belows for inside here, because they'll fight a lot better. Since we don't have warp bomb, um... It, when you do it inside of the fort, they'll have a bit of a morale boost. Probably should aim for those Chaos Warhounds. I reckon they're going to be the biggest problem. Alright, start getting our guys off the walls. It's not going to be an advantageous fight up there. And if the towers aren't going to be shooting at them, there's no point holding onto this position. Okay, time to come off. It's good that they put up the ladders there, because that'll tire them out a little bit, and they're not going to wait around for a rest. Okay, we'll try and set up a good kill zone over here to start wearing down these marauders. Okay, I'll pop this down in just a moment. Because what we want to do... Actually, if you... T no, no, no. If we, if we go around the back here, we'll get pincered ourselves. If anyone's going to get pincered, let it be the menace below. Let's try to break this unit here. worked cool and then we'll try to break this one which probably isn't gonna be enough yeah hold them back while we finish off these good start to this I think all right Run them down. See, so the menace below is actually fighting, you know, a fair bit. It's not actually routing straight away. All right, do we have... We don't have any clan rat... Oh, yeah, we do have clan rat spears. Get them over here. Oh, uh, these aren't considered large, so it doesn't matter, does it? The reason why we want to fight here is, is leadership is a lot better. If we have a look at... Look, the leadership is actually holding out really well. There's a big bonus if you hold out here. The biggest problem with the Skaven is that their, their morale is shit. So we don't want those guys coming back. Still got plenty of ammo. And now we're winning. I definitely ordered too many. I overestimated their abilities here. Quick, quick. So 
So what's this dude doing? Ah, uh, those are Melkoths. Come on, flank him. And that should probably break both of them. That one first, and this one should go sh pretty much straight afterwards. I kind of need these guys to pull back here just a little bit. Because otherwise these guys here can't really get a good shot on them. Just pull back a little bit. Just so that we get a good angle at them and then turn back in. That That's just a Skaven Slave. He may or may not come back. It doesn't matter. that in over there. Hmm, maybe it was a good idea to get those uh, menace belows. Because it definitely is helping. Last one, make it count. And army losses should be just around the corner now. There it is. Probably shouldn't have ordered as many as I did, but got through it. Thing is, using up five uh, menace, oh, what's it called? Yeah, menace below. So that's 15 food. So if you get 15 food back after the victory, which we would have gotten 20 food back from the previous battle, I think. I, I wasn't actually paying attention. Um, we're not going to get 15 food for that, I don't think. So basically, it's a loss of six. Uh, make it uh, a loss of four food. But it still won the battle. Oh, what the... You gotta fix your food problems. You're losing 40 food a turn? So what's going on with Salzamond? Ugh, what? Ugh, I should have just let him take it. Ugh. Yuck, okay, let's... Yeah, you got a big food problem. Okay, let's let's have a, a quick look over things. How many armies do you have active? Six. Ikaclaw's army is... Yeah, it's fine. Um, you got, see, you've got a certain standard up. Look, if you want to have them that way, it's totally fine. See, yeah, that's the army that we just used. That's where we had our, our victory. Um... So he seems to want to use warlords. All of these are warlords. Did you put them in for it? Yeah, 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 you did. Um, yeah, you don't seem to be having any money problems. All of your armies seem standardized a certain way. And that's that's totally fine, but I don't rate it 10 out of 10. You know, you can you, you can make this army better if you, you do what I suggest. But apart from that, uh, no other real problems. All right. Other things. Let's have a look at your settlements. Why do you not have any food? Because you're going with this shit. No. Pretty much you want to put exploited. Why did you need... Why did you need this in here? Like, don't worry about reduced construction costs. You make plenty of money. Get, get food. Please tell me you put that... You didn't put it anywhere? Oh my god. Dude, look. Count this out. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24... 20, sorry. 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34... 40, sorry, 36, sorry, 38, 40, 42, 
44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54. 54 food you could be gaining per turn because of, of the edicts. You'd actually be gaining food. You've got to sort that out right away. Um, that's probably where things are starting to go wrong for you. Um, because if you, you if you have tons and tons of food coming in, then you could just push these settlements straight up to tier 5 and actually save you a lot of money in the long run. Um, but yeah, I think you've been trying to expand way too quickly. Um, cause like a lot of these settlements there, you've got a lot of territory, but it's a lot of crap territory. You would be better off having like one, like reducing the number of settlements you have by a third, but every single province you have is like tier five, tier three, tier three, and all of them walled up, all of them properly built up. Um, that would be better than what you've currently got. Cause you're not really maintaining things very well. And the food problem, you need to fight like two battles every single turn in order to maintain, just maintain the food supplies that you've got. That's really bad. Uh, but anyway, there's definitely some tweaks that need to be done here, but I'll leave you to it. You know, heed my advice or don't. It's entirely up to you. I'm not sure if I added that up all up correctly, but it's roughly around 50 food per turn that you're missing out on because you don't have the right edicts. You don't need this, especially if you're not actually building anything, whereas you can always make my, uh, like extra food from that. It will cause extra scaven corruption, but that just means more menace belows. Anyway, that's the end of this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Appreciate you.